All right, all right. I know what you're thinking. I should address the elephant in the room. <coughs> I didn't mean literally. Now, I know some of y'all are thinking, but Bumpy, why are you doing an update video for a DreamWorks movie that isn't even coming to theaters? Shouldn't you also include Joseph King of Dreams and Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans? Well, hold your horses there, my sweet summer child. See, the former was always meant to come out on home video, while the latter... Do I need to say it? But Orion in the Dark, on the other hand, I, I have a hunch that this was originally going to be a theatrical release. And I can trace it back to September of 2021, when Universal staked out a bunch of untitled dates for 2024. You'll notice some animated titles scheduled for February 9th, March 22nd, and September 27th. Those latter two are pretty close to the dates for DreamWorks' Kung Fu Panda 4 and The Wild Robot, respectively. And the former is right around when Netflix decided to drop Orion in the Dark, thus proving my theory that it was at one point meant for a theatrical release, but then got moved to streaming, whether because of the pandemic, or the strikes, or some other convoluted reason. Or perhaps something will eventually come out which says that this was always meant for Netflix, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a 20-something-year-old from upstate New York who got cancelled on Twitter. <laughs> Ooba dooba. Uh, anyways, warning. This video will contain spoilers for Orion in the Dark. If you have not seen the film yet, then please click off this video now. But if you have seen Orion in the Dark, then please continue watching. Alright, so starting off in C, -t in C tier here, I, I got two characters from Orion in the Dark. First one up top being Richi Panichi, which, yeah, you know what? He's higher up on the list. You know, I like to play on words with the name. Well, not play on words, but like rhyming, you know, rhymes are pretty based. <laughs> yeah. You know, if Richie Panichi, he's basically like a bully to Orion. And um, yeah, he's just kind of there. I mean, he kind of he kind of plays a vital part later on in the plot. You know, when um, when Orion enters that one woman's dream and. Richie shows up in the dream because Ryan Ima Orion imagined him. Uh, you know, it's it's whatever. You know, he's just kind of there. And then um, down at the bottom here, um, I forget his name, but there is a kind of a bit of a backstory behind him. Um, so basically what you got to know, like the main plot of Orion in the Dark, you know, it's Orion trying to overcome his fears by visiting the dark himself. And sometimes in the movie, what they do yeah, like sometimes what they do in the movie is is they'll cut to an adult version of Orion telling the story to his daughter. Yeah, so he's telling the story to his daughter, and and you know, at at one point in the story, like his daughter himself or, or his daughter herself decides to enter the story, right? Yeah, it's it's a little stupid, but it's whatever. His daughter actually helps his young father, you know, save Dark from yeah like he like 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 yeah like orion and his daughter it, it like like they basically save dark from dying at one point in the movie it's like this really heartfelt scene yeah and then later on like after all said and done orion finds out oh oh the girl who's helping it is in fact his future daughter like from 20 years in the future yeah, and then and then they do a quick little joke where um where like where like his daughter i think potvia or whatever the fuck her name is i i actually forgot already god damn <laughs> yeah so um yeah so like orion and his daughter like and then and, and then and then and then like and then, and then orion finds out that 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 this girl is is part of like this time travel squad which includes this kid yeah includes this kid a, a tikio i think his name is yeah and then it cuts to the future where um yeah cuts to the future where like orion yeah like orion's an adult now and then and then, and then Tikio and, and his daughter's time machine are, are are showing up to his apartment. And he's like, and then adult Orion's like, Tikio, you haven't changed a bit in 20 years. <laughs> and then and then cut to another 20 years where now Orion's daughter is grown up. And then Tikio, and Tikio is not only like her son, but, you know, Orion's grandson. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's just as confusing as it sounds. I, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. Part of the reason he's lower in the C tier, I, I feel like the movie really could have done without the whole time travel aspect. You know, maybe it could have found a different way to have Orion save Dark. Like, go in his dreams and shit. Yeah, it's... You know, the movie is still really delightful, though. Like, I highly recommend checking it out.
It, it could have been better, though. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. Uh, B tier. B tier. All right, so B tier. First up, we got Orion's mom and dad here, which yeah, I mean, th yeah, they're 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 uh they're supportive parents. I, I like them. I mean, they they don't get a lot to do in the movie, but you know, sometimes these parents in animated films are not really the most likable characters. So, I mean, I, I mean, I I know we don't always get like Buck Cluck or anything, but still, you know, it's always nice. It's always nice. And then, uh, we gotta scroll up, uh, oh yes, we got Light, who, we, he, he didn't get a lot to do in the movie, but, you know, you spend the whole movie thinking he's like this big jerk, right, he's like really full of himself and whatnot, and maybe there is a bit of that, but, you know, that, that, then you find out, like, Dark is pretty insecure himself, and that, and, and that's like a whole plot point in there. Yeah, but, but Light, you know, and then you find out, like, like, I think Light, like, he really truly cared about Dark the whole time. Yeah, so it's it's always nice to have the have this type of character who's not a full on you know asshole. You know, so, you know that's cool. That's cool. You know, and light. Um, a special shout out to Ike Barinholtz, by the way. Although I have a feeling that epic movie might be, or not, not epic movie. I have a feeling that disaster movie might be the superior Ike Barinholtz film. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um. Okay, we got Sally, who's like Orion's love interest. Yeah, I put her in B. She actually does play a fairly significant part of the plot. You know, because like Orion is like going, Orion is like scared of going on this field trip. And then he finds out Sally's going on the field trip. So now he wants to go, but he's still like nervous and whatnot. Yeah, and then actually um, Hypatia, like their daughter. Like, yeah, Hy Hypatia, I actually looked up her name just now yeah, so yeah you know you know you know sally and, and then and that actually brings me to hypatia herself like hypatia we later find out in the movie like because we found we already knew that hypatia was you know orion's daughter and what i said earlier oh tico is hypatia's daughter and orion's grandson like yeah so so not only is orion um, hypatia's father but hypatia's mother is actually sally yeah it cuts to a scene with like yeah, we don't actually, we don't truly see an adult Sally until the end where, like, Orion's an old man, and there's an elderly version of Sally, and they're, like, looking up at the stars, and then it cuts back to the pl to the planetarium field trip where Orion and Sally were as kids, you know, looking at the, looking at the simulation of stars. Yeah, so, so I mean, again, Sally is a pretty significant part of the plot when you really think about it, as is Hypatia. Again, like... What I said with uh, Tik Tikio, I think his name is. Um, yeah, Hypatia. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I think again. I, I think the whole time travel thing could have been done without. But you know, Hi, you know, Hypatia is at least a decent character. Dur and yeah, I, I like Hypatia. Though, though I wonder who, I I wonder who um I wonder who her husband is and and they both gave birth to Tikio um. Yeah, but that's never explained. But either way, you know, Hypatia, that's... Oh, that's such a unique name, too. Goddamn. And then we got... um, We actually got one of the nighttime entities in the film, um, Sleep. Out of all the nighttime entities, um, Sleep, like, really just gets the least amount of stuff to do compared to, like, Insomnia, Sweet Dreams, all those other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, like... Yeah, she's like... If you want to make a really weird comparison, like to to the to the to the snail group in Turbo, she's basically the skid mark of the group. I mean, I know I play skid mark in D, so maybe that's not the best comparison. Uh, yeah, sleep. Uh, she's just there. Um, anyways, A tier. All right, for A tier, I only have one character. And that would be unexplained noises, another one of the nighttime entities. Yeah, she, yeah. I mean, uh, you could argue that both her and sleep don't really get a lot to do, but unexplained noises, I like. There is definitely some more gag potential there, you know. And this movie delivered on said gag potential. 
yeah, I think like, I think there was one funny part involving her where that's actually showing her like it's showing her in particular like scaring a kid with noises, and the kid's like crying, and then Orion's like, "Oh, guys, this is messed up. Like, this is your job or something. Who, whoever's paying you, I can make it worth your while." Oh, actually, that uh, last part is a quote from the SpongeBob movie, but. Yeah, unexplained noises, and really, I put her in A for peak character design. I mean, come on, that's like a, yeah, like her and like Brandy, like Muppet. Well, I don't know about this, but like, like kind of Muppet looking in nature. I mean, Brandy has, has just full on fur textures on her. So, me, we made a nickel for every bag to bag DreamWorks film with Muppet character designs. Uh, let's move on to S tier. <laughs> Now, on to S tier, um, we got this character, Quiet, which, one, Quiet is fucking precious as hell, I mean, good god, and then, I just like her ability just, just to, to, to just, like, suck up all the noise in the world, it's like she's Kirby or something, her and Kirby would probably get along, the downside of that is there's probably gonna be a bunch of Vor art surrounding her, good lord, um, anyways, uh, before I get, you know, before I get really down bad, uh, let's move on to Sweet Dreams over here. Yeah, like, honestly, like, between all the nighttime entities, aside from Dark, of course, but between all the other nighttime entities, like, she's probably the most significant to the plot, you know, because her abilities to, like, create dreams for people and shit, like, it actually, it actually does progress the plot, and even at one point when Orion himself is, like, basically the way they gotta bring Dark back, like, after he dies, yeah, like, well, dies. Yeah, and yeah, that's a whole plot point. Like, like Dark dies, and then, and then they get the idea to, to bring him back through Orion's memory of him. So Sweet Dreams has Orion fall asleep, and then her and Hypatia go into Orion's dream to try and save Dark. You know, that way they can bring darkness back to the world. You know, because light makes everything too fucking hot. Yeah, and then yeah, and, and sweet dreams, and actually bonus points to uh Angela Bassett, who is who actually does really good work because she was also in Disney and Pixar's Soul. She played a uh, Dorothea Williams in that. Yeah, and uh, Angela Bassett just kills it. Yeah, I, I'd say she was a good choice for Sweet Dreams. Maybe she should be in a jazz competition with Dorothea Williams. <laughs> I feel like she would play jazz, honestly. Okay, now, next up, we got the two main stars of the show, Orion and Dark. Uh, yeah, Orion, yeah, honestly, this entire movie was, like, really, like, just, like, Orion himself, just, like, he, he's honestly gonna become a comfort character of mine. Yeah, I'm also someone who tends to be, like, rather paranoid over everything. Maybe not to the extent he takes it, but, like, yeah, I do get worrisome from time to time. Yeah, and the and character development. I mean, geez. Character development. Yeah, I'm like losing my train of thought here. But like he does have good and him and Dark are like really good like buddies together. You know, because um yeah, actually we'll we'll get to Dark in a minute. Yeah, Orion and the Dark are pretty relatable characters in their own respective way, you know. Orion is very like paranoid and then Dark he's like very insecure about himself, so and and he and, and reason, really the whole reason Dark comes to be is because of is because you know, like Orion is apparently the kid who's most afraid of him, and so like and he's annoyed by how much he screams and shit. So he basically goes to Orion and shows him there's nothing to be scared about. Yeah, there's nothing to be scared of with the dark and and they, it's, just, it's just this really just sweet heartfelt bonding journey. You know, it's like, like something about it, it just. It it just it, it just uh it, it scratches that itch. You know, I, I yes, like it's just I, I can't describe it. Like you gotta watch the movie though. It's like it, it's it, it is genuinely like one of the most wholesome fucking movies I've ever seen in my life. Or not my life, but like in a while. Yeah, I, I can definitely see this one getting a bit of a cult following. And finally, um, actually, my actually, well, actually, but, but before we get over to insomnia here, uh, dark sh shout out to Paul Walter Hauser. Um, 
I mean, his voice does sound a bit Seth Rogen-y for my taste, which then I'm wondering, like, like why not just get Seth Rogen himself? He has a good history with DreamWorks. Yeah, but Paul Walter House, he still did a good job, I think. Yeah, funny how he could go from, like, Richard Jewell to one of Cruella's henchmen and now the dark. Yeah, I would like to see him do more animation. Just maybe just maybe not that, like, Seth Rogen-y type voice. And then Orion, um... It's gonna. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna really have to get used to Jacob Tremblay's voice getting deeper, you know, because he was also Luca in Luca, and yeah, you know, he sounds like a kid. He sounded like he sounds like a kid in pretty much every other movie he's in. So then we got Insomnia here, who is I. I uh, between all the nighttime entities, he's my favorite. He he just gets the funniest jokes, like the funniest. It's like him whispering into people's ears, saying like. Oh, I have a deadline that needs to be done. And then, oh, I'm going to get fired. I'm so fired tomorrow. Like while they're sleeping and it just instantly jolts them awake. And one of my favorite gags involves him like, like, like he's trying to wake some woman up. And then like he has a cassette tape of like, oh, that embarrassing thing I said in fourth grade. The capital of Delaware is D. <laughs> uh, that was probably the hardest I laughed in that movie. Yeah, so Insomnia is a fucking trooper. Yeah, he he's my favorite character. He's not like not just my favorite nighttime entity, but my favorite character in the entire film. And uh yeah, that's going to just about do it for the Orion in the Dark update of the Dreamworks character tier list. Now that a uh, little intro I filmed where I mentioned Joseph King of Dreams and Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans and why they don't count. Um I recorded that before they announced that they were all that Dreamworks uh animation television on March 1st is going to release a sequel to Megamind called Megamind versus the uh fuck I forgot the name but uh bam image flash it yeah Megamind versus the yeah whatever yeah I, I don't really care about it and I doubt it's going to count as a proper DreamWorks movie unless DreamWorks decides to take the Nickelodeon movies approach and put their movie logo on 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 uh on y you know on 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 stuff that was clearly meant for television Hopefully I'm not jinxing anything there. Anyways, the next proper movie on DreamWorks' schedule is Kung Fu Panda 4, which is opening just a week later on March 8th. I'm really excited for that, you know, being a longtime Kung Fu Panda fan. Hopefully Poe can stay in S tier. And then following that is The Wild Robot on September 20th, 2024. They actually did confirm the release date. And then they also confirmed that um, January 31st, 2025 will be the release date for for their adaptation of Dev Pilkey's Dogman. And then there was that Cartoon Brew article, which, which said that um, there was that Cartoon Brew article, which said they had two they had an unannounced original and an unannounced sequel for 2025. I do still think the original is going to be Ronan Boyle. I, and again, I well, actually based on my own speculation i i because last time i had said that um the 2025 sequel could either be the bad guys 2 or shrek 5 and um at this point i gotta be honest i'm leaning towards the bad guys 2 could still be shrek 5 but or it could be something else entirely uh <laughs> shark tale 2 anyone but anyways yeah that's gonna just about do it for for this update um this is Bumpy Gaming going back under the bed. And remember, there are fates worse than the dark. Or Phil Betterman.